Good afternoon. I believe that this region has the opportunity to become the Silicon Valley of a new way to make things. We can be leaders in a new industrial revolution, and that will boost our economy, create new jobs, and will enhance our well-being. That's what I believe. Why? Let me start by, sh let me start by showing you this example. This, ladies and gentlemen, is one of Rembrandt's masterpieces, The Jewish Bride. And of course, it's a copy. <laughs> but not just a copy. So how did we get this here? Well, the researchers from Delft University, they scanned the original that is in the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. They developed their own scanning technology, and they were able to capture not only the surface colors, but also all the layers of ink and the 3D structure behind it. So what they did, they captured the original in 3D. And then this big digital file was sent to Venlo, where scientists were able to print this replica, shooting more than 100 billion little drops, incredibly small little drops of ink on this canvas. And by doing so, they not, did not only print the surface colors again, but also the whole 3D structure. So every brush stroke exactly as Rembrandt intended it. European masterpiece printed with a technology that we call inkjetting. Let's talk about inkjetting for a moment. We all have these little desktop printers at home, right? So who has one? Please raise your hand. Very good. So that's a lot of people. We are familiar with these devices. But how do they work? Let's imagine you've taken a picture. You have a photograph on your mobile device, and you want to have that printed. So you send this file directly or through the internet to your printer. And in this printer are, most of the times, Four different, printer, printer, four different print heads with four different colors, and they start shooting these incredibly small drops of ink onto the paper. And while the paper moves through, we create the printout of the picture that we had. That's basically inkjetting as we know it today. Now back to Rembrandt. Basically, same technology was used to print this Rembrandt. Of course, a bigger printer, a little bit of a different ink, but the fundamental difference is that this printer was able to not only put droplets next to each other, but also on top of each other. And by doing so, create this 3D print with ink of this masterpiece. So there you go, 3D inkjetting. Now let's take this one step further. Because the potential of this technology is, you can take out the ink and basically put in any material you like. So let's imagine we take out the ink and put in polymers, plastics. You can print displays and screens, like the one you have in your cell phone or your tablet or your flat, uh, flat screen TV at home. And already today, in 2014, the large manufacturers of these displays, of these screens, they are investing in inkjet technology to 3D print the next generations of these, of these screens. So, if you take out the ink and put it in polymers. Let's look, at the, let's look at the next example. What if we take out the ink and put in metal? We basically could print any precision metal part. An example you see here, this is a unique uh, example that happened this last August, actually in China, in Beijing. There was this little boy, 12-year-old, uh, unfortunately diagnosed with a rare form of cancer, and he lost one of the vertebrae in his neck. And what the doctors were able to do here, for the very first time, they used the 3D scanning technology they have available in the hospital and were able to design this unique, customized, uh, artificial vertebrae and then 3D printed using titanium. 
And actually, this metal part was then implemented in the little boy's neck very successfully, and already days after the procedure, he was up and running. Very unique example. A little bit on a lighter note, we're approaching the holiday season. So what if we take out the ink and put in chocolate? Actually, that's not that difficult. You could print any chocolate piece you like. You can print your own black bead. And if you're uncomfortable with black bead, you can print a yellow, a red, or a gold, whatever bead you prefer. <laughs> so there we have it, 3D printing. However, my point here today is not to show you the wonders of 3D printing, although it's pretty cool. But I'm here to explain that we have this opportunity in this region to become the Silicon Valley of a new way to make things. So first, let's have a look at how do we make things today. Basically, what we use is an old model from the 1800s. It's a make and distribute model. We gather all this material into one place, we make a lot of the same products, and then we distribute them all over the world. Yes, it has worked, but it's unnatural. Nature doesn't like it. It uses a lot of time, energy, space, creates a lot of waste. So we need something new. By the way, did you know that within 20 years from now, the amount of containers that we ship into Western European harbors will be more than doubled? Our logistic system cannot deal with that. That is unsustainable. So we need something new. So let's take this make and distribute system and change it around into a new digital system where we distribute digital files of the products that we need around the world and then locally make 3D print only those products that we need. That's the vision. That's the new way to make things. That's what I believe. By the way, I'm not the only one who believes this. Already three years ago, the European Union um, commissioned a roadmap to define a new manufacturing system. So, 16 people from various universities and companies in Europe, they got together in Amsterdam and they envisioned what they called, called this new way of digital fabrication. With at the heart of it, 3D printing. And actually, they detailed this into a roadmap that describes how we can evolve to this new world of digital fabrication. And the group, uh, the consortium, is called uh, DigiNova. You can find him on the internet. Please check him out. If we do this well, if we capture this opportunity, then what they wrote down basically will be our future. DigiNova.com. So, now let's bring this back to today, to, today uh, to here, to this very region. Because we can become leaders in this new digital revolution. Why? Because the research into jetting technologies, uh, jetting of different materials, new material science, new product design, new way to make things, that is happening as we speak in this region. It's happening at the high-tech campus in Eindhoven. It's happening at high-tech research and development facilities in Veldhoven and here in Venlo. And it's happening at the Camelot premises in Sittergeleen. And it's also being researched at universities of Aachen, Leuven, Maastricht and Eindhoven. So it is happening around us. And you know, this region has a great track record of entrepreneurship. We have proven innovation in uh, life sciences, imaging, electronics, agriculture, logistics. Now think about the following. Let's imagine that we could combine the forces, combine the strengths, the assets, the creative minds, the people of these companies and universities. And if we could then focus on this vision, then we really can become the Silicon Valley of a new way to make things. And that will make this region flourish. That will boost the economy, create new jobs. We can solve real problems and in the end, enhance our well-being. That's what I believe. That's why I'm here today.
And in the end, if we want to join forces, it starts with people connecting. This is where you can find me. Let's start connecting today. Thank you very much.